This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 371, an excerpt from the audiobook Essential, Essays by the Minimalists, by Joshua Fields Milburn and Ryan Nicodemus, and I'm Justin Mollick. Welcome, fellow oldie. And that's not me calling you old, because old or OLD stands for Optimal Living Daily, which is this podcast, where I read to you from some amazing authors with their permission. And sometimes I play you excerpts from audiobooks that I narrated myself, That's sort of a newer thing here. I narrated a couple of the minimalist books and they're letting me use all of this book right here on the podcast, which is super generous. And today's excerpt is straight from the gift giving chapter, which just might be something you're thinking about right now since the holidays are approaching very quickly. So hopefully this helps you with your decision-making for gifts. So with that, let's hear the essays as we optimize your life. An excerpt from the audiobook Essential, Essays by the Minimalists by Joshua Fields Milburn and Ryan Nicodemus. When to give gifts. Ours is a gift-giving culture, one that places great emphasis on giving physical items to other people as a measurement of caring. Seems silly to write, but it's the truth. We often give gifts to show we care. So on your birthday and a handful of holidays, people show they care about you. Don't they care about you those other 350 plus days every year? Or do they feel different about you those days because they aren't gifting a physical item? when you probably don't want anyway. Let's face it, the worst time to give a gift is on a birthday or holiday. There's an invisible expectation to give gifts at these times, and it's a hard expectation to live up to. The best time to give a gift is today, right now, for absolutely no reason at all. This helps us show the people in our lives they are just as important to us today as they are on any holiday. Gift experiences, not stuff. Here's an idea. What if you decide to gift only experiences this year? How much more memorable will your holidays be? Experiences worth considering? Concert tickets, a home-cooked meal, tickets to a play or musical, breakfast in bed, a back rub, a foot rub, a full body massage, a holiday parade, walking or driving somewhere without a plan, spending an evening talking with no distractions, making out under the mistletoe, visiting a festival of lights, cutting down a Christmas tree, watching a sunrise, skiing, snowboarding, sledding, dancing, taking your children to a petting zoo, making snow angels, making a batch of hot apple cider, taking a vacation together, watching a wintertime sunset. What other experiences can you give to someone you care about? Your experiences build and strengthen the bond between you and the people you care about. Don't you think you'd find more value in these experiences than material gifts? Don't you think your loved ones will find more value too? There's only one way to find out. Letting go of physical gifts. The two of us tend not to accept physical gifts. Sometimes it's hard to get people to understand this cultural shift. The best way to approach the no gift getting concept is to be proactive. We set the expectation with our friends and family we don't need any more stuff. And if they want to give us gifts, they can get us experiences we will enjoy. They can celebrate our lives with us by spending time with us, not by piling on more stuff. Of course, most of us don't want to piss people off. We don't want to offend. We worry what others will think. Case in point, we received an interesting email from a reader, Dina, about Joshua's essay, Letting Go of Sentimental Items. Quote, I recently started my minimalist journey, and up until now, everything I've let go of has been pretty easy. I just wanted to thank you for this post because you helped me see that we are not our stuff. I now realize I do not have to hold on to something in order to remember a loved one. Their memories are inside me. However, I am having trouble getting rid of gifts. It's not me who has a problem getting rid of them. It's the people who gave them to me who might get a bit upset. I was wondering if you had any suggestions. I want to get rid of this stuff because I feel like it is holding me up from moving on with my new lifestyle, but I do not want to offend anyone, unquote. Joshua's response. Most people won't notice or won't care. A few might get offended and that's okay. When I left my corporate job, some people got offended. When I stopped checking email every day, some people got offended. When I said no to certain past commitments, some people got offended. When I untethered from negative relationships, some people got offended. We can't let these things bother us, though. I think my friend Julian Smith said it best, quote, Yes, it's really happening right at this moment. Some people don't like you, and guess what? There's nothing you can do about it. No amount of coercion, toadying, or pandering to their interests will help. In fact, the opposite is often true. The more you stand for something, the more they respect you, whether it's grudgingly or not. What people truly respect is when you draw the line and say, I will go no further. They may not like this behavior, but so what? These people don't like you anyway. Why should you attempt to please them? Unquote. It's okay to toss the stuff if it's not adding value to your life. Donate it, sell it, recycle it. 
Let go of it so you can focus on what's important in your life. Most people won't even notice, especially the people who care about you. You just listened to an excerpt from the audiobook Essential, Essays by the Minimalists by Joshua Fields Milburn and Ryan Nicodemus. And again, that's straight from the gift-giving chapter. And there are some more essays about the holidays, which you'll most likely hear in tomorrow's show. I'm still sort of taking a break. I am and I'm not because I still have to edit these episodes and stitch the audiobook into this podcast, plus upload the files, write the descriptions, and do that four times since I have four podcasts now. If you'd like to contribute to help keep me going before I completely lose my marbles, it'd be awesome if you can help out in any way. I've put up a page at oldpodcast.com support that lists some ways that you can help, either financially or otherwise. Please come by if you find value in the podcast and the other three that I produce. And I think that's it for today. Happy Friday. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you over the weekend where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.